welcome. Hopefully you've got your drinks. Uh, and now start with a bit of an introduction. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Liz Sandworth and I'm the Chief Professional Practice Advisor at the Chartered Institute of Internal Auditors UK and Ireland. In case you are very new to all of this and aren't aware, the Chartered Institute of Internal Audit uh, UK and Ireland is the voice of the internal audit profession across UK and Ireland and we are the only voice that talks solely about uh, internal audit as a profession in terms of training our people and supporting our members facing the challenges of delivering internal audit. We are also part of a much larger global body, IA Global, and they have approximately uh, 200,000 members across the globe. So we, as, a charter, as the Chartered Institute, have 10,000 members, but we are part connected to a global family of internal auditors. And we all work um, to the same IIA standards, core principles, definition and code of ethics. So that's really important in terms of what we're doing. So we're going to talk today about climate change and the role of internal audit in climate change. I guess some of you are going to be sitting there, perhaps scratching your heads thinking, climate change, what's that got to do with internal audit? Actually, it's got a lot to do with internal audit and we need to make sure that we're asking the difficult questions. Those of you that subscribe to our Risk in Focus report when it comes out each year in September will have seen that last year climate change was number 10 in terms of the top risks. It will be interesting to see when our Risk in Focus report comes out where it sits this year uh, in terms of the top 10 risks. There was a massive spread in our Audit and Risk magazine um, if you didn't notice it in the January and February edition, perhaps go back, have another read. And also remember, we have produced some technical guidance. So for those of you that are members, you will find it on our resources page. So um, there's an article, I think there was about, I think it was a 10 page spread on climate change in January, February magazine, really worth reading. We have lots of technical guidance in terms of how you can audit, how you can calculate carbon usage for your organization to see whether um, they are managing their carbon usage well or whether there are challenges. So it's a subject that arouses many emotions and we may well have people sitting here today who are on either side of the debate about its existence, its causes, and whether we need to do anything about it. So we are hoping today not to uh, address those specific questions, but to take the position that it's happening, consider it, and what, if anything, internal audit could, should do about it. So before we start, I think I better own up to the fact that I'm a wife of a dairy farmer, we have probably 150 cows and as you will probably have read, cows emit methane, particularly apparently when they burp. And there are some solutions to this. Um, you can get a mask that goes over their face that absorbs the methane uh, when they burp. Uh, apologies if you are eating your sandwiches, but you know, Bear with me. You can also apparently feed them um, seaweed. And that's not, you know, the seaweed you pull from the sea, but when it has been um, concentrated and reduced down, you can include that into their feed. Both of those things help to reduce methane. Um, is my husband on side on all of this? I, I think to be fair, he wasn't originally, but when we have looked and thought about how the climate has been impacted by COVID-19 and the lockdowns and reduced travel, etc. 
uh, you can begin to see some of the value and some of the incentive in terms of taking this sort of um, course of action. Uh, I think it would be fair to say we have a, an old um, farmhouse and we do our best in terms of heating and lighting reduction. We have changed our light bulbs um, to these long-term ones. Uh, we certainly recycle. Um, we take plastic from um, stuff that comes through the post and do what we can to maximise and recycle it. Uh, we eat less meat, um, or certainly less red, red meat because I'm a vegetarian, so I am encouraging my husband to eat uh, more fish um, and more vegetables to make that um, reduce our, our uh, use of um, processed foods and also carbon offset when traveling. So looking to reduce the amount of traveling. Before COVID, I did used to travel a lot as those of you that have seen me all over the UK will know. But hang on a minute and let's think about what we've learned from COVID and how effective a uh, virtual world is. And therefore, potentially, we probably won't be traveling as much anymore. And I think one of the things that really impacted my thinking in this space, and I don't know whether any of you saw it, was a picture, a picture of Portsmouth Harbour. I think it was in one of the newspapers and then shown on TV. And they had two pictures, one where the, the sea was black, you could see nothing, uh, which was pre-COVID, and the other one where the sea was green, and you could you could actually see fish in the picture. So, you know, we need to think about these sorts of things. So if you're just joining us, welcome to our live stream, Talk to Internal Audit. And uh, today's theme is climate change. So that's what we are going to be talking about and continue to talk about. Climate change is one of those topics that doesn't seem to fit immediately into the Internal Audit agenda. It is not a core part of routine audit work, probably not on audit plans, and certainly perhaps not perceived to be as important as Brexit, COVID-19 or cybersecurity. Do you agree? No, it isn't, that's not right, it's wrong. It fits, absolutely fits, but we haven't just yet worked out quite how it fits. So I have two questions to ask you. Um, and I want you to think about these. So on a scale of one to 10, with one being unimportant and 10 being critical, how in your heads do you rate climate change? So make a note, write it down. Are you a one, are you a 10, or are you somewhere in between? And also on a scale of one to 10, with one being unaware and 10 being completely understand how well you understand your organization's response, where are you? So are you one, unaware, or 10, absolutely get what your organization is doing and understand how they're responding and plan to respond to climate change? Interesting to see how you perceive yourself on this one to 10 continuum. So while you're thinking about that, may I also draw your attention to a climate change survey that the Institute currently has running. It's available to all heads of internal audit in the UK and Ireland, and it asks about what you are currently doing to help the organization you serve address the risks and opportunities associated with climate change. So help us, the Institute, identify where support is needed by participating in our nationwide survey now. You can find details of it on our website and on our social media channel. It will take approximately five minutes to complete, so please spare us five minutes. No real excuse for not doing it. The easy response to thinking about climate change is to say they should fix it. Who should fix it? Um, should we do our bit? And every little bit that we do has to help with the overall objectives that we're seeking to achieve around carbon neutral, meeting the global targets. So with every bit of recycling, we are doing something to help this improve. 
But is that enough? A lot of people seem to merely talk about it. And then they get worried when potential changes might negatively impact their lives and begin to wonder whether anything significant and positive will ever happen. Well, we know it will. We've had COVID and that we can see the change thinking about what we do and why we do it makes. So th there is real merit in, in reflecting and thinking about that. So we've already seen that um, while we rate the importance of the subject highly, our understanding of what our organisation is doing is lower. Everyone's organisation will need to be involved in the change that's required and it goes way beyond reducing waste and turning down heating and being that person who switches off the light bulb um, or the last one to leave the office. All of those things help, but they're not enough. So if strategies and plans don't exist, aren't clear, aren't communicated or aren't being pursued, we will never make the changes required. Internal audit does have a key role to play here on what is the most critical of risks we're likely to see during our lifetimes and perhaps more importantly, those of our children. And in my case, grandchildren and two great-grandchildren. So their future is paramount to me in terms of what the world is looking like. So what's our role in relation to climate change? Is it the same as normal? Is it the same as everybody else? Or is it the same as we would expect in terms of any uh, of internal audit's roles? The role of internal audit, just to remind you, is to provide independent assurance that an organization's risk management, governance and internal control processes are operating effectively. So let's apply our normal process to climate change using the traditional risk management cycle. Identifying and accepting the need to change is difficult, particularly if we don't understand the problem properly. Does your board understand the problem? There have been a number of seminars recently by an organisation called Chapter Zero. And Chapter Zero targets boards and non-exec directors and is now supported by over 800 organisations in the UK. Its primary aim is to help non-executive directors engage with the potential risks and opportunities, there are opportunities, for businesses and take this discussion to their boardrooms. It is critical for our boards to engage with and understand the subject, as without this, our organisation, all organisations will not respond quickly or effectively. Mark Carney, the ex-governor of the Bank of England and now UN Special Envoy on Climate Change and advisor to the Prime Minister on Climate and COP26, was a speaker at the Chapter Zero session. His remit includes raising the profile of climate change and supporting increased rates of response from NATO countries. He will also be focusing on building frameworks for financial reporting and risk management. We'll return to these later. Some of the key points made during his session and from other materials produced by Chapter Zero included the need for boards to improve their understanding of the risk, the need for board education on how to assess the risk and develop responses, the need for boards to understand the opportunities mm -hmm. and develop responses for those. One key opportunity was discussed, and that was the fact that there is over a trillion pounds of investment funds available to support change in the UK. This is crucially important to boards and executives. The need for a strategy, a plan, allocation of accountabilities, allocation of targets, and implementation of effective reporting, oversight, and governance. So we as internal audit need to have a discussion with our audit committees to understand what they're thinking regarding climate change and if relevant, offer what we know about developments outside the organisation. And we must replicate 
these discussions with executives and look at all of the incentives that are out there that we can be sharing and communicating across our organisation. So we really need to understand the risks together with the potential opportunities. They begin to ground the topic in the organisation and help it really understand linkage to the current strategy and business model. And don't forget the purpose of the organisation as well. The three for me are a triangle and we need to think how climate change risk links these together. It's only through a thorough analysis and understanding of risk that the organisation can make robust decisions about its response. We, Internal Audit, need to understand if this risk assessment has been done. Have you asked the question? And whether it has been done with appropriate input to ensure it's robust. So is this something that's been put together perhaps um, by a senior member of the management team who has been, you know, sitting, thinking this through, um, looking on the internet, building something and then sharing it? Or has he consulted or they consulted widely across the organisation? Once the thorough assessment has been completed, the next step, as you would expect, is to determine a strategy. And then the key initiatives that will support the delivery of that strategy. Already in some organisations, the assessment of climate change risk has resulted in a new strategy for the whole organisation, within which the climate change response is a critical element. Internal audit. We need to assess whether a strategy and action plans have been developed. How is this to be delivered within the organisation's overall strategy? I hope you're noting down some of these questions because I think Internal Audit has a real role to be a catalyst with regard to climate change risk and our organisations and help them prepare for this as we move forward. As we all know, having action plans is all very well, but they need to be delivered to be of any value at all. Delivery needs to be built into management's objectives and progress must be measured. This particular point will rapidly become relevant as the external requirements for reporting on climate change response with organ within organisations will now evolve rapidly and organisations will need to publish detailed information on a regular basis. Mark Carney was clear that for many, reporting requirements will become firmer in 2021. So we need to assess the progress, the management and the oversight of the delivery of agreed actions. Are you beginning to pick up some familiarity here in terms of, isn't this what we would do with any new and emerging risks? We also need to assess the reporting mechanisms to ensure that they are operating effectively and are adaptable to emerging standards. We've done something very similar recently, haven't we? If our organisation has been furloughing its staff, we've been providing an assurance that our payroll data is accurate so that when it was submitted to HMRC um, to enable a claim to be made, we would know that the data was accurate and they weren't going to come back and ask for a refund of monies paid. So we need to make sure, just as we did for that, that for climate change, the mechanisms for reporting mean that the, the information in our reports are accurate. Communication and engagement is critical to this subject. Without sharing our organizers, uh, uh, sorry, our organization's vision, strategy, and a plan, it will be impossible to create the sustained change that's needed. When I'm talking about communication, I'm referring to our customers, investors, regulators, and most importantly, staff, including internal audit. We need to assess the effectiveness of the communication process and adoption of key messages by staff and to staff. Simply speaking, if people don't get it, they won't do it. That's human nature. There is much more 
that we can do in the future and the Institute will return to this in other forums. In the meantime, if we can do this initial work and ask perhaps some of these challenging questions, we will undoubtedly add some real value to our organisation. And as I said at the beginning, those of you that are, are members of the Institute, have a look at some of the technical guidance we've written on this topic. And if you think there's other information that isn't readily available, then please don't hesitate to contact me because I'm more than happy to hear from you and anything that we can do um, you know, to help you prepare for this. So what do we need to do? We need to help our organisation to talk about risk, but not talk forever. Decide, in effect, respond, real actions that will make a difference. So what is your organisation doing? Do remediate everything it can to support risk mitigation and where possible, take advantage of the commercial opportunities which will obviously exist, deliver results. Which things are we doing in our organizations that will make our grandchildren, remember, great-grandchildren proud? Can you look in the mirror at the end of each day and say, have I done my bit as internal audit, as a member of a community, as an employee of an organisation to help us tackle climate change. So what are we going to do in the future? Eat more vegetables, minimise light bulbs, feed seaweed to my cows, my husband's cows, turn the heating down, put a sweater on, do more homework, realise that we don't know enough to be able to have robust discussions where required. Go back, look at Risk in Focus 2020 and the articles in there, the risks in there around climate change and some of the questions internal audit can ask. Become a global citizen. Raise my own awareness and support actions which I believe are needed. Talk to the communities in which you live and work and collectively perhaps we could do some more. I'm going to try and help others understand the commercial opportunities exi that exist for so many organisations now. We're going to continue as an institute to speak to you, to heads of internal audit, to audit committee members and try and help shape internal audit's current and future role in relation to climate change. Help us add value and make a real difference. So in conclusion, I would suggest everyone watching, listening, thinks about what they can do in their organization to ensure that internal audit can add value by raising the profile of climate change risk, explaining the potential impact on the organization and providing assurance over the organization's response. It's a serious subject, so I want you to please think very carefully about it. The live stream is available afterwards for those of your friends and colleagues who may have missed the live version on the Facebook channel. Please follow all of the exciting things the Institute is doing on Facebook, LinkedIn and Twitter. And if you haven't already done so, remember please to fill in our climate change survey and also go back and have a look at the um, edition of the Audit Risk magazine that we published in um, January that looked at climate change in some detail. As a member, you have access to the latest edition of Audit and Risk magazine on our website, along with other resources and technical content. As always, more than happy to take questions via email at liz.com.
sandwith at iia.org.uk. Next week, we're going to be looking at disruption, as if things aren't disruptive enough already. And I want us to think when we look at disruption next week, not just about it from a business perspective, but also from an internal audit perspective in terms of what are we doing? Um, can we do things better, differently? And how can we learn from COVID-19 and what we take forward? I heard someone on a breakfast briefing say uh, only recently, a um, couple of weeks ago perhaps, if we think COVID-19 has been a challenge, it is nothing compared to climate change coming down the track. So please, please bear that in mind and give some thought to what we shared and really contribute and work with the Institute to help us all tackle climate change risk. Remember, talk to Internal Audit because the Institute is listening.